Hello there. In the previous video, we introduced the negative binomial distribution and random variables that are associated to this distribution and did a couple examples. In this video, we're going to derive the moment generating function for the negative binomial random variable so that you can calculate the moments, for example, the expected value and the shifted variance or the third moment or fourth moment of the random variable or pretty much any order random variable that you are interested in. Alright, so before we get into the actual derivation of the moment generating function for a negative binomial random variable, um, I want to derive a particular combinatorial identity uh, that you may not be familiar with um, because we're going to need to rearrange this x plus r minus 1 choose x term uh, because it's definitely not going to be uh, as easy to work with as say n choose x or something like that, right? Alright, so let's work on this x plus r minus 1 choose x factorial, see if we can get a better representation of this. Alright, so as we know, this is going to be equal to x plus r minus 1 factorial all over x factorial times x plus r minus 1 minus x factorial. And as we can see, the x minus x's will cancel out. Uh, so this is just precisely equal to x plus r minus 1 factorial all over x factorial times r minus 1, the quantity factorial. Alright, so now what I want to do is I'm going to expand uh, this down in terms of its product terms. So that's going to be equal to x plus r minus 1 times x plus r minus 2 times all the way down to uh, r times r minus 1 times r minus 2 all the way down to 1. And you may see why I want to expand this downwards. Uh, and it's left as an exercise to show uh, that x plus r minus 1 is always going to be greater than uh, r minus 1. So therefore we can always expand past um, r. And that should be easy to see because x and r, x is a positive number or non-negative number moreover added to an r which is positive. So x plus r is bigger than r. So um, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. So we have r minus 1 factorial and r minus 1 factorial there. Uh, so they're going to cancel. Um, so the top is just precisely equal to x plus r minus 1 times x plus r minus 2 uh, all the way down to this variable r all over x factorial. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 1 out of each of these things. And you may not know why yet, but it should become clear uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so this is going to be equal to minus 1 times, uh, so x and r are both going to be turned negative and negative 1 is going to turn positive. So that's going to give us what? So that's going to give us minus r minus x plus 1 times minus r minus x plus 2 all the way down to, so there's a minus 1 for this one, there's a minus 1 for that one, all the way down to a minus 1 for that one. Right? Alright, cool. So what do we have here? So we have x factorial there. Now it's, it should be easy to see that there are going to be x negative ones in the top. And if that's not obvious, um, definitely do a few examples to sort of convince yourself of that fact. So this is just going to be equal to negative 1 to the power of x all over x factorial multiplied by this product of terms. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 out of these two terms, these two terms, and there's another term before, negative r. I'm going to factor that out of those two terms as well. And let's see what that actually gives us. All right, so that's going to give us minus r minus x minus 1, and then minus r minus x minus 2. That's going to go all the way down to minus r minus x minus x minus 1 times minus r, right? And you should be able to work with this last term to see that that actually works out. So definitely this is a little bit more complicated than normal, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, multiply top and bottom of this by minus r minus x factorial, right? So let's just see what that is. So we have minus 1 to the power of x over x factorial and then times, so what do we have? So we have minus r minus x minus 1, minus r minus x minus 2, 
minus r minus x minus x minus 1. So what's going on here? So I have x minus x, um, so that's going to give us uh, 0. And then we have plus 1. So this is actually minus r minus 1, and then we have minus r, right? Right. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this by minus r minus x all the way down to 1. So minus r minus x all the way down to 1, right? So this term is the next term after this if I were to rewrite it, right? So if I rewrite this in more standard notation, this is just going to be equal to minus r times, let's see. So this is going to be minus r minus 1. Then the next term that precedes this is going to be minus r minus 2, all the way down to minus r minus x minus 1. Right, So that's that term. And then we're going to have times, so this term that we're introducing here, so this could be minus r minus x, and then we're going to keep on continuing because this is minus r minus x plus 1, and then we're going to have minus r minus x minus 1 all the way down to 1. Right. So some clever manipulations here. All right, so what exactly is this? Well, this is a binomial coefficient. So we can show uh, that once we factor in this x factorial in here, that this is just going to be equal to minus 1x times minus r factorial x factorial times minus r minus x factorial, which is the definition of minus 1 to the power of x minus r choose x. Right. So this is a very, very compact form of the thing that we were working with before, namely x plus r minus 1 choose x. All right, so now let us get into the derivation of the moment generating function. All right, so now let us get into the moment generating function, mx of t. So by definition, this is just going to be equal to the expected value of the random variable e to the power little t times capital X which is by definition equal to the sum across the support of x times e to the power t little x times p random variable x uh, value of x. All right, so for the moment generating, for the negative binomial random variable capital X, the support as we know is zero to infinity times e to the tx times the moment generating uh, probability mass function x plus r minus one uh, choose x times 1 minus p to the x, p to the r. Remember, r is a constant here. All right, so now I'm going to replace this binomial coefficient with the thing that I had before, or that I just derived. So this is just going to be equal to the sum from x is equal to 0 to infinity of e to the power of tx multiplied by minus 1 to the power of x minus r choose x times 1 minus p to the power of x, p to So remember, the summation only depends on x, Therefore, this PR can be factored outside of this summation. So notice e to the tx, negative 1 to the power of x, 1 minus p to the x, all have a power of x in its power, or a value of uh, x in its power. So I can combine all of them into 1 by exponentiation, and we rewrite this as simply p to the power of r times the sum from x is equal to 0 to infinity. So negative r choose x is the only thing I have here, so minus r choose x times minus e to the tx times 1 minus p to the power of x. All right, so I'm going to be calling this thing here, I'm going to call it y. And I'm also going to do a substitution. I'm going to say q is equal to minus r, right? So this is going to be equal to, instead, p. So if this is the case, that means r is equal to minus q, right? So we have p to the minus q times the sum from x is equal to 0 to infinity of q choose x. So notice here that there is no r in terms of this. So we have y to the power of x. All right, so if you remember from calculus that this is what we call Newton's binomial theorem, 
um, which is pretty much an extension of the normal binomial theorem, uh, which converges uh, for the absolute value of y is less than 1, which is just the way, another way of saying uh, negative 1 uh, less than or e less than y less than 1. All right, so let's assume that y uh, satisfies this condition. Uh, if it does, then this thing is going to converge. Is going to converge, namely, to 1 plus y to the power of r. All right, so this equaling this is Newton's binomial theorem. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, this should be q. This should be q. All right, so replacing q with negative r again. So this is going to be equal to what? So this is p to the power of r times 1 plus y to the minus r, which we can rewrite instead. So mx of t is going to be equal to p to the power of r all over 1 minus 1 minus p to the power of et, or you can put the et in front of the bracket like we had before, it doesn't matter, uh, to the power of r. This. Now we need to test the convergence of this at the point t is equal to 0 just to make sure that this can generate all the moments for us without any issues. So remember that Newton's binomial theorem converges as long as the absolute value of y is less than 1, which means that the absolute value of minus e to the t times 1 minus p, this thing must be less than 1. All right, so absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and e to the t is never negative. Um, so this is the same thing as saying uh, e to the t, the absolute value of 1 minus p, is less than 1. So when is this true? Well, as long as, let's see, if p is equal to 0, as long as, uh, let's just set t is equal to 0 here just to get rid of this. Um, so as long as p is not equal to 0, then this is OK. Uh, but what does p is equal to 0 mean? So in terms of the negative binomial random variable, uh, this means you never can succeed. So it's a pretty depressing random variable, but uh, nonetheless, uh, that is what it is. All right, so it works for t is equal to 0 as long as we can succeed, at least um, with some probability greater than 0, so everything is good. All right, so now let us use this moment generating function to derive uh, the expected value. All right, so the expected value of x is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to t of the moment generating function of x evaluated at t is equal to 0, which in more compact form is just m prime of x uh, evaluated at 0. All right, so let's take the derivative of our moment generating function. So this is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to t of, let's see here. So the best way to do derivatives of this function probably would be uh, by bringing the bottom up to the top again. So then we're going to have pr uh, 1 plus p minus 1 to e to the t times minus r. We're going to evaluate this at t is equal to 0. All right, so we're going to use some chain rule here. So this is going to be equal to, so minus r is going to come down. So minus r p r times that thing. Minus r minus 1. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside here, uh, which is just going to be equal to this. Uh, so 1 goes to 0, and then we're going to be left with p minus 1 uh, times e to the t. And then we're going to evaluate this at t is equal to 0, which is going to make things really nice for us. So when t is equal to 0, this goes to 1, that goes to 1, and then we're going to be left with what? So 1 minus 1, that's going to give us 0, and then we're just going to be left with p there. So I have minus r, p to the power of r, p to the minus r, minus 1, p minus 1. All right. All right, so when we add r plus minus r, that's going to cancel, so we have p to the minus 1 there. So this is going to be equal to minus r times p minus 1 all over p, which is, of course, the same thing as r times 1 minus p over p. 
So 1 minus p is the probability of failure, p is the probability of success. Right? So that means the expected value of the uh, negative binomial random variable is going to be equal to r times 1 minus p over p, where r is equal to the number of observed uh, number of successes. until we stop our process. Remember, these are independent Bernoulli trials, so we're, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying, uh, until we get our successes. And so let's look at an example. So example one, uh, suppose that the probability of success is equal to uh, 0 0.4, and we continue this process, like playing a game, until we have five successes. So if at first you don't succeed, try try again until you have five successes. So if this is the case, then the expected number of failures that we plan to see is going to be equal to five times the probability of failure all over the probability of success. So that's going to be equal to 7.5, right? So we can rewrite this expression again. We can rewrite this as uh, the number of successes that we mandate, probability of failure over probability of success. Now it's possible that you may want to redefine x um, as something else. So in this uh, expression, this is the expected number of failures. Uh, and we continue until we have a certain number of successes, but what if we want to continue until we have a certain number of failures and we want to know the expected number of successes uh, in that, right? So we can redefine everything in a different way. So let's assume y is the random variable that represents the uh, number of successes and rf is the number of failures until we stop the process, right? So if all of these trials are independent in Bernoulli, then that means y follows a negative binomial random variable, as we should know, um, with the expected value of y to be equal to rf. Now instead of the probability of failure, now we have the probability of success all over the probability of failure, right? Which is the same thing as rf times p over 1 minus p, right? Um, so as an example, suppose uh, the probability of success is 0.7, which forces the probability of failure to be 0.3, and we continue until we have 8 failures then what does that mean? So that means the expected number of successes is going to be equal to the number of failures times the probability of success over the probability of failure, which is going to be equal to 8 times 0 0.7 over 0 0.3, which is approximately equal to 18.67. So we expect to have uh, 19 successes until we have 8 failures. Um, which is a lot of successes, but notice that the probability of success is uh, significantly high, right? Now you can use this moment generating function, of course, um, to calculate the second moment, which as we know is the second derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at zero. Uh, and once you have the second moment, then we can use the variance representation, uh, which as we know is just really the second moment minus the mean squared. Uh, and of course, you can rewrite the variance formula in terms of moment generating functions if you want. So this is m double prime x of 0 minus m single prime of x of 0, the quantity squared, right? And that will generate the variance formula for x. And similarly, you can do it for y if you want to measure the uh, number of uh, successes instead of the number of failures. It's perfectly 